So January 2024 kicks off the year of the stash challenge here on the Victoria Marie YouTube channel. And today I have a project, a 12 by 12 inch scrapbook layout where I'm using things from my stash. Now, if you miss my announcement about the year of the freeze, make sure you go to my YouTube live stream. It is recorded. You can go ahead and check it out here on the Victoria Marie YouTube channel where I talk all about it. And there is a link to a blog post where I explain what the freeze is all about. So if you did miss it, what we're doing for an entire year is we're not buying scrappy stuff at all. I'm not buying any scrapbooking supplies. I'm not buying any card making supplies. And I'm using what I have here in my studio. You can make this freeze or frost what you want. I'm doing an entire 12 months, but you may choose to do something a shorter period of time or maybe only freeze a certain item. But as far as my projects this year, I'm going to be sharing a whole lot of creative inspiration just using the supplies and tools that I have with the hopes of inspiring you to do the same. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's project. So I pulled several items from my stash. We're gonna start with the pattern paper. I have two six by six pattern paper pads. I wanna to try to use these up this year. One is from Pink Paisley, one is from Kelly Perky. I'm gonna use those to mount my photos and to make my photo tags. I'm also going to use this 12 by 12 pattern paper, paper pad called Floral Spice. This is from Joanne, their Park Lane. Those are the papers I selected. And I dug through my stash and picked out some coordinating elements. Now this layout isn't necessarily themed, so I was looking for things that would work well with just a generalized layout. I also grabbed some older st thickers. Let me know in the comment section if you remember those. That particular design is called Poolside, and I also grabbed some other small stickers from Citrus Twist. I'm going to do a tiny bit of stamping on this one to create a stamped border. I thought I was going to do a little bit of a background stamping, but I end up forgetting about that. Also has some VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink and this tool from We Are Memory Keepers or We Are Makers Now. I'm going to use this to create my tags. So you're going to see that here in just a moment. All right, let's go ahead and get the background set. I'm going to use the blue pattern paper as my base and then I'm going to bring in two layers. This was trimmed down the white grid paper to 11 by 11 inches and then I'm going to add the yellow striped pattern paper to the top and that was trimmed down to I think about roughly 4 by 12 inches. I don't measure if you're new to my channel. I'm not a big person who measures, so <laughs> I just go by approximants. I'm going to add this little scallop border. This is from a sticker sheet from Simple Stories that I pulled out of my stash. I am going to trim up that right hand side here in just a moment. I auditioned my photos just to make sure I do want that border. I'm going to trim up the excess just using my cutting knife and a sharp edge. You don't want to press through. You just want to gently kind of cut it until it comes apart. That way you're not cutting the background of your layout. So I'm just showing you the paper is a little bit flimsy, so that's why I didn't gut that blue paper. People, you'll always ask me why I cut or not cut the centers of my uh, pattern paper if I'm going to be covering up a majority of it. Usually if the pattern paper is thinner, I'm going to go ahead and keep the layers as they are and not gut the center. All right, so let's bring in the photos. What I want to do here is I want to create three photo tags using the photos and some pattern paper, and I want to give the impression that they're hanging off the top of the layout, so I brought in some black and white twine. So here we go. I'm gonna go and reach for some scraps from these six by six pattern papers. And I'm using six by six because one, it's not a whole lot of paper. And so there's not a lot of paper waste. And two, it works really well because the patterns are smaller. And since I'm just using this to make the tags and as an anchor for the photos, I thought I'd do this instead, use some of those scraps if I could versus cutting into a 12 by 12 pattern paper. And you certainly can do that as well. So I'm looking through the Kelly Perky stack. I've had this for, I don't know how long. I probably purchased it at Tuesday morning when they were still around and I'm just selecting some papers that I think would work well. Now, of course, I'm using different collections here. So the way that I'm doing this is I'm finding colors that coordinate. They don't have to match exactly. They just have to be as close to it as possible um, without it being, you know, going to inertia. As long as it looks to me, looks good to me, then I'm fine. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to adhere my photos on the scrap pieces of pattern paper. This one actually was small enough to fit my four by three inch photo. I'm gonna trim around the sides just to have a nice little pattern paper border around the photo. But at the top, I'm gonna to leave just a little bit more because I'm gonna need that space to create the top of my tag, if you will, this making a photo tag. Once I have it all trimmed up to what I want, of course, this is gonna vary depending on what size photo that you want to use. I'm gonna go ahead and use my We Are Makers Punch, and I'm gonna notch out the angle of the, um, the tag, and then I'm just gonna use a regular old office hole punch to create the hole, and there we go, an easy to make photo tag. Now you can use Whatever tools that you have, you can just use this. You can just use your scissors to create this. You don't need a tool specifically. But one of the things I want to impress upon you this year is as you're using your stash, also use your tools, whatever tools you have. So if you have a punch board that creates tags, pull that out and use it. If you have a tool like mine, 
use it in some way or just to create tags by hand or maybe use your electronic cutting machines and cut up a whole tags or maybe you have some tags in your stash you can use that are big enough to house your photos so lots of different ways that you can create this look i'm going to bring in my little trusty little enforcer punch as well this is from we are memory keepers i'm going to create little white enforcers for all of those tags so that um, they're nice and sturdy on the layout i just really like the look they're going to be adhered to the layout so it's really not going to make a difference to be honest with you but i really like the look of having an enforcer on a tag so here are my photo tags super easy to make using items for your stash you don't have to go and get anything new this is a great way to showcase multiple photos on your layout in a really creative way now what i want to do is add a bit of dimension behind these tags so i reached in to my supplies grabbed some foam and if you've been around with me for a while, you know I love popping up my photos and a bunch of other things on my layout using foam. So I'm just adding these foam strips and they're actually thin strips. I think they're less of less than an eighth of an inch uh, thick. And so they work really well for this. I'm going to position the tags on the layout, just kind of get a feel for where I want them. And I think that I'm going to keep them here on the right hand side of the layout. I need to trim a little bit of the adhesive off of one of the tags. It's going to actually be my hero photo, the one that's going to sit a little bit center of the three. And uh, I need that space on the top of that tag so that I can layer it like so. Once I have an idea of where I want those photo tags to go, I'm going to bring in the twine. This is from my stash. And I think this is maybe from Michael's, perhaps. And I'm going to run that to the top of the tag, from the top of the tag to the top of the layout. And I'm going to run the rest of the twine behind the layout and adhere it with some washi tape. And you'll see that here in just a few. Once I have an idea of where I want them to go before I adhere them on, I want to go ahead and create a stamped border. Now, I initially thought that I was going to add a little bit of stamp texture behind each of those photos, but then I forgot. <laughs> so we're just going to move it right along. I'm going to add the stamped border. This is a really great detail. If you love the look of stitching on a layout, these are stitched borders from Bow Bunny. Um, if you love that look, but you don't necessarily want to hand stitch, or maybe you don't like to machine stitch, or you don't have a sewing machine, then getting a stamp that features stitching in some way will definitely give you that nice look. Now I stamped that in black ink, and I think that's a great way to sort of ground those colors and add a little bit of structure visually to the layout. Now I went ahead and adhered the, um, twine with a little bit of washi tape behind the tags, but I was... Of course, washi tape is somewhat low tack, so I was scared that the uh, twine would come apart. So I went ahead and just stapled using a tiny attacher the twine to the top of the tag. And I went ahead and took off the uh, release paper from the foam. And now my tags are adhered to the background. I love the way that that looks, the black and white twine with the black stamping around the border. We're good to go. Let's go ahead and add the title using these stickers. It's called Poolside. I have owned many, many sets of this particular <laughs> thicker style. I absolutely love it. I'm going to spell the word T with those stickers. And I'm going to bring in some metallic, gold metallic letters. These are from Citrus Twist. I hoard these as well. So I'm going to try to use them as much as I can from Citrus Twist. Some of my favorite font stickers. Now it's time to embellish. For this particular layout, I will be honest, when I was filming this, filming this uh, particular project, I wasn't quite sure where I wanted my clusters to go, but when in doubt, go ahead and just do three and put them in a visual triangle and call it a day. <laughs> Don't overthink the process. So I'm gonna create a nice anchor there at the top. And I pulled in some chipboard frames. Those are from Pink Fresh Studio, as well as some floral elements. And I wanna say these are from Pink Fresh as well. The floral elements are actually from a fall collection. Um, but I'm just going to pull out the, the elements that I think work color wise with the pattern paper. So I've got some oranges and reds and blues, which work very well. Once I kind of have an idea of what floral, um, items I want on there, I'm going to come in with some different, um, icons. So of course a camera, which I think is great. I kind of snap these in the middle of a conversation with my kid. Um, and I'll go over that story here in just a moment. So I have this sticker camera. And then of course the title of this layout is called spill the tea. So we are at the stage of my daughter's teen years where she um, tells me about the drama that's going on with her friends at dance or just in general. And so she'll be like, ooh, mom, I've got some tea for you today. So as she was talking, I was snapping some pictures because it occurred to me that we are at that stage where uh, she's sharing parts of her life with me that I don't get to see. You know, I don't get to watch her when she's in dance class. I'm not with her when she's interacting with her friends most of the time. So I wanted to document this and say, I really, really enjoy talking with her about, you know, what's going on in teen world with her. And, you know, we talk and we gossip and we laugh and, you know, we're so judgy and petty. It's great. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I'm so glad I can share that with my kiddo. So now that I have all the elements worked out, it's time to tack them all down. I did bring in some label stickers from Jelly Bean Soup that I've had for many years. I used one as an anchor for that camera down there. You're going to see me an use another one that's a tab here in just a moment that will house the date for the layout. Otherwise, I'm just layering on the different floral elements. I'm almost done with this pack of embellishments. What I plan to do is leave these items out so I can see if I can create some cards and maybe some more layouts before I put it away. That's another thing I'm trying to challenge myself to do with this year of the freeze is once I select items to use, then use as much of that particular product as possible before I put it back in my stash. So that's gonna require a little bit of pre-planning in terms of the types of layouts that I want to make with those items. I don't scrapbook chronologically, so I can kind of, you know, flip-flop around throughout the year the different stories that I like to document. But if the products work in general, then I want to keep it out and get some utility out of it. Once everything is nice and adhered down, it's time for some final bells and whistles using these decorative brads. These are from Simple Stories. I think I probably have about five different manufacturers going on here, which is the brilliant thing about the Year of the Freeze because you'll be encouraged to use items across different designers and manufacturers so you can get the most utility out of your stash. And if you are on a long freeze like me, then you're gonna have to get a little creative with the product that you have in your uh, crafty stash. So I went ahead and typed up my journaling using Microsoft Word, printed that on Hero Arts Classic Layering Vellum. I love, love, love that vellum, it's my favorite. And then I'm going to stamp the date. I have an old uh, Felicity Jane roller date stamp that has the year 2024 on it. I think it's my only stamp that does, roller date stamp that is. And with that, this project is done. Now I have a question for you. What do you currently have in your stash that you can use to create a similar layout? Let me know in the comment section. Do you have punches, metal dies? Do you simply make tags by hand? Are you gonna use your electronic cutting machine to give this, shot, give this a shot? Let me know. This is a really easy design to make and you don't need a whole lot to achieve this look. This layout was a lot of fun to make. It's been a long time since I just reached my stash and used the things that I love. And I'm gonna to continue to share this type of content here on the Victoria Marie channel all year long. So stay tuned.